Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, Kaiser adds Rafir Noble to their lineup, a first look at Best Tech's new budget line, and I jump out of my wheelhouse with the best EDC folders under three and a half inches. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was actually from Thursday Night Knives. It was a replay comment, and uh, this is from Brandon G. And we were talking about Best Tech Man. The uh, the new budget line Best Tech from Best Tech that I uh, hinted at in the intro, and he said uh, we were talking about the name Best Tech Man. And he said Best Tech Man sounds like a misunderstanding between two people whose primary language is not the same. Come on, the deadline is today to submit the new name for the product division. New name? What do you mean? We're we're Best Tech Man. <laughs> uh, I thought that was great. Uh, it's it's a, a bit of a confounding name, but as I said on Thursday Night Knives, so was Civivi to me when it first came out. I was like, Civivi? What's this? Sounds kind of Italian, sounds kind of Latin. I don't know. Uh, it'll never catch, but of course, Civivi, a brand we know and love, and Best Tech, a brand we know and love, and I cannot wait to show you uh, this Best Tech Man Dundee. It's awesome, and it's in their new budget line. So thanks, Brandon G, and thanks to everyone else for watching and also for commenting it's greatly appreciated and uh, i get i get some insights uh insights to what what people are thinking all right i think it's now time for a pocket check oh hello there uh today i had the uh, socom bravo from microtech on me it, as my primary carry in my front right pocket. And this was one that I was so excited about for so long. And it took me a while to get my hands on one. And uh, now I see they're coming out sporadically in different uh, iterations. Uh, they had a fully serrated tanto and a straight edge tanto. Now they have a half and half, and they also have a half and half uh, coming out for the um, clip point. I chose the clip point after much deliberation uh, because I already have a Tonto in the SOCOM lineup and it's the SOCOM Elite and it's from 2013, one of my favorite, uh, actually like my favorite model year for um, Tontos in the SOCOM lineup, if I'm going to be uh, exact about it. I really like the swedge and the drop point on that knife. Um, just a beautiful blade. So I decided why not go for uh, the also very fetching clip point that they make. Um, never had a clip point from Microtech. And, uh, you know, so this is what I went with. And uh, I dig it. I love carrying it. I haven't really used it for much. Um, it, it, you know, this rarely comes out if I'm carrying it and I have to cut a piece of toast or a bagel at work or something like that for breakfast. Uh, this is usually not what comes out. So this ends up... Uh, uh, this so far has been mostly a collectible, but no doubt uh, a stout and sturdy knife with M390 blades. Is this M390? Yeah, M390 blade steel. Uh, you've got this really stoutly built uh, bolster lock. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's kind of like their, uh, well, it's a frame lock, but the way it's attached is different. And um, you've got the titanium pocket clip and you've got the um, carbon fiber. It's very stout, very sturdy, and it's made by Reich in uh, Reich knife in China. That is not a bolster lock, nor is it a knockout. I, I was speaking out of school there. That's just a traditional frame lock. It's just uh, kind of oddly framed there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Reich knife, known for their sculptural uh, prowess, their machining prowess, uh, was the company that Microtech entrusted to ma to making their offshore knives. So they've done this. I cannot do it with my left hand. Sorry. Uh, they make this, and now they make the Annex, which is a an integral. It's beautiful. It's got this thin handle, this very broad uh, broad drop point blade with a nice fuller, gorgeous knife. I have not really um, sought that one out, but. Uh, I'm just a, a super SOCOM. I love the SOCOM. 
and uh, I've been kind of seeking others, you know, casually. Uh, I look here and there. Uh, I would love to get an old one, like from the late 90s or early 2000s. All right. Also in my pocket today was the Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth. I've been carrying this one so much since I got it. Just to me, a uh, consummate gentleman's knife, even though it's broad and and fat, you can get some... You can get some real work done with this. The day I got this, I was cooking with my wife and I was in charge of the salad and all the vegetables. And I did them all with this knife on that evening. And it was a storied occasion. Um, I, I am not one who uses pocket knives for kitchen prep. Why would you if you have kitchen knives? But uh, this was a just a proof. You know, I, was, I, I looked at it. Was, that's a high height grind on a very broad blade. I wonder how this is going to do. And it did so great. Greatly, wonderfully. Um, I've carried this a lot since then. I've thrown it in my bag a lot. The bolster has picked up a bit of scratch. Uh, that titanium bolster. This is titanium. Um, and just a, a great model. QSP made. Awesome action. And for me, the thing that really uh, sells it is the Coca Bolo. The Coca Bolo handle is just, woo, just gets me. And uh, I'm getting more and more into wood on my knives. I really like that uh next up speaking of things i really really like the jack wolf knives benny's clip nothing new in terms of carry i've been carrying this thing non-stop since i got it uh this one yesterday was uh, part of a a cardboard derby i had uh, after a full week of taking care of both my daughters while my wife was uh kicking butt uh at a business conference i uh i was doing some man chores yesterday it was great I had the whole day to myself. And one thing I had to do was break down a bunch of cardboard. I finally brought this one out on some on some kind of hard use, heavy use. Not not the cardboard is heavy use, but you know what I mean? That repeated, uh, well, uh, on a lesser knife, uh, it would have failed after a while. This thing just kept going and going and going with that M390 blade so thin and um, hollow ground there with that saber ground uh lanny's clip blade and that slight recurve in the downward angle of the cutting edge man it just did so well it just, it like slipped down the seams of the cardboard it was really nice you know um you know how it can be and so of course i had to leave leave the evidence on the blade yes uh, actually i didn't do that on purpose ordinarily i would i would clean that right away with alcohol and maybe even flitz it uh, but uh, I didn't yesterday. I was too busy doing manly chores and having fun being alone. Okay, next up, uh, last on me today was a um, a fixed blade, a small fixed blade, uh, the Bright for War Quaken by Josh Mason. Such a good knife maker. Uh, I like this setup. I'll show it with the sheath first. This is a really good neck knife, um, but it's also great just to drop in the pocket. You can also do the thing where you uh, attach it to your belt loop and then just slip it in your waistband. But this one is a little small that uh, sometimes I feel like um, it might slip down. And now it never has, but I don't know. It's just a feeling I get. Beautifully uh, wrapped ray skin handle, ray skin wrapped with that uh, sukamaki wrap, and then a beautiful Turkish knot here to stop your hand from going up onto the blade. And that blade, a beautiful uh, small quaking. Uh, is picking up a lot of patina. I think I might bring this one back. Now I, I started to patina this, but kind of the nature of this design, you you rarely see Japanese blades with patinas, and it's so clean and so I don't know. I think I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna flitz it back to uh, back to normal. But just a beautiful blade, very very sharp. What he does is he zero grind. Uh, he fully flat grinds these to a zero edge. And then he knocks the edge back a little with a uh, a relief edge. And it's just really, really super sharp. Josh Mason, he's uh, check him out. Bright for War on Instagram. I love this little knife. I have a thing for the Tsukamaki wraps for the these Japanese kind of um, samurai sword wraps. And he does a great job. He also did my Elvia from Copus uh, Designs. Okay, so that's that's what I had in my pocket today. What did you have in yours? For me, it was the Bravo Socom, uh, Socom Bravo. It was the Finch Buffalo Tooth, the Benny's Clip, and then the actually equally sized uh, fixed blade 
quaking from Josh Mason and Bright Four. Let me know what you were carrying today. Drop it in the comments below. Uh, let me know and let me know why you like that knife. Um, it's cool to 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 get a comment and and someone says today I was carrying the uh, the Benchmade bailout. And then it'd be also nice to know, like, and I think it's a great knife, or I, I think I might, uh, I don't think it's quite for me, or something like that. I'd love to know what you feel about these knives you're carrying, because not every knife I carry am I psyched about. And then it ends up either getting um, on the chopping block or collecting dust. The ones that collect dust, I try to move out of here. And the funny thing is, is once I get the resolve to sell a knife, oftentimes, no one wants that knife. That's very frustrating. So uh, uh, I think the name of the game is sacrifice, you know, a, a little bit of sacrifice now for a better future um, works with everything. And I'm sure it works with knives. All right. Uh, more philosophical waxing coming up. Uh, but first, if you're interested in supporting this kind of blather, uh, go to Patreon. We have three levels of support, three tiers of support. Um, gentleman junkie, traditional junkie, and, uh, 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 traditional junkie, wait, traditional at three tactical at five and 10 is the gentleman junkie. And there are all sorts of, uh, interview exclusives, exclusive material there and uh, knife giveaways and other kind of stuff. So go over to Patreon and check it out. Quickest way to do that is go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon or scan that QR code. Again, that's the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Kaiser, uh, I talk about Kaiser a bit here lately. I've been into the Vanguard line uh, quite a bit. They're an awesome company. And um, they're just, uh, they were the first high end uh, Chinese manufacturer after Riyadh that I became aware of uh, with their Matt Cucciara uh, Dorados and, and those. Uh, really nicely contoured titanium knives that they did uh, as their proof of concept knives really launched them. But uh, that Vanguard line has always, always held my attention. Uh, anyway, so uh, Kaiser now has a whole new line coming out with Refere Noble. Uh, Refere Noble is a material from a Danish company called Refere that is really beautiful and interesting and kind of... Um, kind of like Damascus uh, with uh, um, a plastics, domestic plastics, if you will. Uh, similar to C-Tech, you can put uh, different kind of uh, metal materials in there, and uh, they do a whole bunch of different patterns. <clears throat> I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the only experience I have with Refere Noble, uh, this material is was on a knife that uh, Alex from uh, uh, Cut uh, Watch and Cut sent me couple of years back it was his sharp by design arch nemesis and he had uh, he had brian nadeau brian nadeau put uh refere noble in the handle it's really really beautiful stuff so they're putting it on five different uh different knives here the two different versions of the gemini the ppy the beg lighter 2 and of course the uh the sheepdog everyone's favorite the sheepdog. Uh, beautiful. I'm looking forward to checking these out. Uh, I don't know if I will get one. Uh, the two Geminis, by the way, one of them is a lefty Gemini. So that's, uh, that's, that's why the two Geminis. Um, but I am interested in checking these out. Uh, I, am I correct? Does Refere, does, do they make some cool glow in the dark materials too? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, check that out. Coming to you shortly from Kaiser. Uh, also coming up soon is Essie's new um, folder. <clears throat> we always think of Essie for knives like this. Uh, this is this is actually the Artac 2, the precursor to the Essie Hunglis, their big daddy uh, bush knife. Um, I keep it right here on the desk, you know, just in case, uh, just in case any bamboo pops out at me. Uh, they are announcing a new friction folder. Friction folder, you say? Why that? And uh, that's kind of that was kind of my response. But it is so 
nice on the eyes, I got to say. I think this knife is beautiful. It's got a, a three-inch Scandi ground blade, uh, this nicely sculpted and contoured, and and uh, it's got like these concentric arcs uh, milled into the tan uh, canvas micarta. It's a really nice-looking knife. Now, technically, a a uh, um, this kind of a, a uh, knife should not be an issue without the lock because you are always going against that stop pin that is stopping that extended blade tang that you use with your thumb somewhat like a front flipper, except slowly uh, to open up. Uh, what do you think of this kind of knife? I, I don't have any friction folders. Uh, it stays closed by friction. Uh, so that that protruding tang there, uh, once it is all the way, once the blade is all the way open, that protruding tang is sandwiched tightly between the two, um, the two handle scales. And that's what keeps it, uh, if you're just holding it by the handle, from folding down in. Um, but what stops it from folding when you're using it is using it properly and using it against that edge. So really, technically, there shouldn't be a reason to have th that you need a lock on it. I would just want a lock on it. But maybe that's in the offing. Who knows? Uh, SC has done uh, a number of locking folders. Uh, but I really like the looks of this one. It it has, it has maintains the real spirit of SC in being a true outdoors knife with that Scandi edge. By the way, it's called the Pinhoti. Pinhoti. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but uh, the Pinhoti. And it's designed by a gentleman named Shane Adams. Shane Adams, nice work. Design us a locking one too uh, for those uh, who might be interested. Um, and you say, Bob, mind your own business and design one yourself if you want. <laughs> uh, all right, so coming up next, we're gonna look at the state of the collection. I have something on loan to me from Hero Sticks as uh, he frequently loans me stuff. I have something really cool there. Then I'll, I'll show you the new Best Tech Dundee. And then... We get to the 10 best, well, this is more than 10, but the best three and a half inch EDC folders that I find myself carrying all the time, despite being out of my wheelhouse. All coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So thanks to Hero Sticks and uh, this old sword, Blade Reviews, and other great uh, viewers, I get a chance to try knives that I've never experienced before. And uh, this is a really cool one. This comes to me from Hero Sticks. Thank you, sir. This is the Secant by Birch Tree Blade Works and Riot. Uh, I mean... If you're not looking, if you're not seeing this right now, it is a gorgeous recurve tanto with a single um, hollow ground bevel and a beautiful downward pointing swedge with the uh, with that tip totally down the center line. But it's got this nice swale in the top and a thumb uh, extension with jimping. Just a gorgeous blade, outstandingly beautiful blade. And then it's on a handle that that is... Uh, surprisingly comfortable and ergonomic. I saw this handle and I thought that looks cool, but it's going to be a problem. And it isn't. It's got a a partition for my medium sized hands, I should say. And this is a smallish knife. That's a what three inch blade. Um, three no three and a quarter inch blade. Sorry. Um, my hand fits in that three finger partition perfectly, and then my pinky rests on that outward uh, on that outward and downward flank there and it just fits perfectly in hand and then in reverse grip uh were you to need it in reverse grip the sculpture uh is perfect in the in the back here for your thumb it's this is just a great knife it's so beautiful and then riot just you know killed it just really did a beautiful job on it um you just barely nudge the thumb stud and it flies open and then you you get this incredible drop shut action um so what we're looking at here is a titanium bolster lock beautiful bolster on this front show side and then you have 
natural brown or tan canvas micarta that has, uh, I have a feeling that Hero has carried this quite a bit. It, uh, the, uh, the micarta has a bit of a patina on it. And then on this side, you see that bolster lock. I love bolster locks because they do not interfere, you know, with the opening. And what, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is on a regular, fully exposed frame lock, there is a much greater chance to be depressing the lock with a finger, uh, with an inactive finger or a bracing finger accidentally when you're trying to open it. And it can slow the opening or stop the opening. A bolster lock gives you this platform here, in this case of micarta, for you to rest your fingers on. And that doesn't in any way exert pressure on the lock bar. So I love bolster locks. I think they're quickly becoming uh, my favorites in terms of, or, or, you know, I think they're quickly becoming, in my mind, superior to the frame locks. Uh, this, to me, is just a real, real looker. Last week, I showed off um, the Berg Bladeworks uh, knife that it kind of goes really well with this. They would That would make a great double carry. Um, with this secant uh, and i was like secant secant what is that i, I know i've heard that and then i looked it up and i realized oh that's why it doesn't know it it comes from mathematics the ratio of the hypotenuse to the shorter side adjacent to an acute angle uh the reciprocal of a cosine oh of course it's the reciprocal of the cosine and if my dad's listening he's saying yeah yeah it's the reciprocal of the cosine what did we spend all this money on your education for bob secant Beautiful knife uh, makes me feel a little uh, inadequate uh, with the mathematics part, but uh, in every other way, this knife makes me feel great. Thank you, Hero, for uh, loaning me this beauty, and I'm going to be doing a close-up video of this uh, for the channel. Okay, next up, this is this is really uh, this is the exciting, uh, fun part, and uh, and where did I put it? It's over here. Wow, <laughs> thought I almost left it somewhere else. This is a very exciting knife for a number of reasons. This is the Best Tech Man Dundee, the inaugural knife of the budget line of Best Tech, the new budget line. And you hear me say it all the time. I love Best Tech. There are a number of Best Tech made knives in the list you're going to see uh, of, uh, of EDC folders coming up. They just... They do great work under their own shingle, and then they do outstanding, sublime work for uh, your favorite designers when they have them uh, as an OEM. Just, just, I, I am enamored, and I can't say enough about how much I like their knives. Uh, this is no exception, I gotta say, and and it's uh, smartly, and I say smartly because. Well, this is uh, designed by Ostop Hell, so they came out of the gate with Best Tech Man or. They came out of the Best Tech Man gate with an amazing designer. Ostop Hell from Poland has designed some of the some of the most awesome EDC knives uh, of recent days. Stylish, futuristic, but totally practical. This one, if you look at the handle closely, uh, really does mimic the Metamorph, the knife that put him on the map, and um, was a put kind of put front flippers on the map. I gotta say. But this has a very, very similar streamlined and uh, faceted along the long axis handle here. And then I guess that's their new logo on the pivot. It looks a lot like Dylan Mallory's logo, I have to say. I'm not sure I like it, but uh, who knows? Maybe that changes. Maybe that's just for this. You see the the clip. This is called a Dundee. So that that's a clip point blade. You can see the clip start right after the thumb jumping here. It's a long, subtle clip. The Dundee, of course, named after Crocodile Dundee and his and his Bowie knife, which can be bought actually uh, by Down Under Knives, or you can buy one made by Down Under Knives. I've been wanting to get one. Uh, but anyway, uh, so very subtle blade shape on this. And then, of course, you see that beautiful fuller, really handsome on that blade. Unfortunately, it is not useful in terms of opening the knife. Now, um, I'm going to use my right hand as I normally would, and I'm really going to do my best to get the meat of my thumb in there. Now, the top of the fuller is sharp enough that it would be usable if it were accessible, but it's just not quite accessible. I, I can, if I do it really, yeah, I just cannot get it. 
cannot get it and i want to get it that's the one little micro beef i have with this knife um everything else is totally on point um you've got a deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws you've you've got uh you've got the awesome flipper tab uh, triangular shaped it's like a perfect uh landing pad for your for your thumb here or i mean i'm sorry for your finger there actually it works great with your thumb too I like to flip with my thumb. Um, and then it looks good down there and is a finger guard, just in case you have to use it in the push. Uh, the, the G10 is very nicely sculpted. The action is great. Good blade grind. It's very, very sharp. It's This knife is great. And uh, this will be released on October 17th at a low price point, uh, which... Let me see if... Let me see if that information is right here. I, I don't believe I... I know what the price is going to be, but it is D2 blade steel G10. This one is gray. Uh, that's a 4.73 handle. That's 3.3 ounces. It's a, uh, it's a 3.2 millimeter blade. And they did not list, uh, this was sent to me by best tech to check out and they did not list what it's going to cost, but, uh, yep. It's, uh, it's coming soon. And, uh, I'm really excited. I think it's this is a good sign that they're coming out with a this is going to be their Civivi and um, I think it's going to be awesome if this is any indication and every other best tech. So keep your eyes peeled. I know uh, a number of people, myself included, have posted some content about this um, uh, previously. So check it out. All right. Uh, next up, this is some uh, this is also a company that reached out to me and uh, I must admit I was a little bit. Uh, uh skeptical but uh i've been i've been impressed with what they sent me okay this is a master cutlery it's an umbrella brand and they own mossy creek and they own m tech and they own some other uh budget oriented brands and their mission is to get good quality edc knives into the pockets of people who need and want them for a low price and uh, they have some stylish stuff. They have some tactical stuff. They have some hunting and outdoor stuff, you know, with all these different lines. And uh, they asked if I was interested in seeing anything. And I I perused their catalog and I actually found some stuff that I was interested in seeing from their uh, elite tactical line. And uh, so they sent me a couple. But before I get to those, they also sent me a couple of, um, I got to say, I love these little knives, uh, two little novelty knives. They're rather charming. Uh, this one is the uh, from TAC Force, which is another one of their uh, sub brands. And it's a heavy little steel bomb. It's just a cool little knife. It's got a great little blade, very sharp, and, you know, something you might keep in your bar or something. I mean, I wouldn't carry this one because, well, I just wouldn't carry this one personally, but this would be a nice one to have like uh, sitting on the bar um, in your basement or whatever. Okay, next up, another one that would be good for that, or maybe in the cooler that you take to the pool. Uh, this little knife, it looks like a Budweiser bottle. It's from M Tech. It's a fully hollow ground, I don't know what kind of blade, stainless, I guess. Uh, but it also has a screwdriver cap lifter. So cute little novelty knives. These are very inexpensive things that you can get as uh, get a bunch of them and give them away as gifts or whatever. Uh, but the more serious knives they sent <clears throat> from their elite tactical line uh, are these two. Uh, this one is called the Parallax. And I've been very, very, that came out weird. I've been very impressed with this knife. I got to admit, it's a face only a mother could love. That blade is uh, to the to the eye, to my eye, a bit awkward. One too many lines, one too many angles. But man, it works it works really well. This is a really uh, great EDC knife uh, so far. Now, I've only had this a week, but I've been kind of banging on it. I've been kind of like, oh, yeah, prove to me that Elite Tactical is so elite, you know? I've been kind of, and, and it's been impressing me. This is D2 Blade Steel. The one thing um, that, that was a little wonky is actually the blade grind on this one. The other, the other knife I'm going to show had a perfect blade grind, but right here it seems to thin out a little bit. And by that, I mean, actually, it's a little dull right there at the apex, uh, duller than the rest of it. But it, the whole thing is razor sharp. It's got a, um, it's got a, uh, what are we going to call this? Uh, a saber grind. It's like a, 
<clears throat> clipped drop point with a swedge clipped drop point with a swedge clear as mud okay they keep the the tip down uh, the center line maybe a little bit lower than center line making it really good for utility it's got a decent belly but also a nice little straight here which is slightly downward angled due to the shape of the handle and gives you some really good cutting uh geometry in this direction in other words that uh, angle of the blade to the knuckle is is really good on this knife. Um, the action, the action is outstanding. It, it has this sort of axis looking lock here, but what it is is it's sort of a yoke in there, similar to the scorpion lock that uh, fits down in in a notch on the tang of the blade. And when you lift up the when you lift up the thing, the button. It lifts up that bar and it releases the blade. It's It's got a real addictive action, uh, much like an axis lock and a thick, very sturdy handle. The whole thing is super sturdy. Um, I actually carried this around for a day of uh, my day of errands, <laughs> my my good fella, good fella's days of errands. And this thing was really good. Um, it was, though it is thick and sturdy, it was not bad in the pocket at all. Um, if anything, I like a longer knife, and so it felt a little short. Um, but yeah, I, I like this thing. I got to, I got to admit, I thought, ooh, it's kind of ugly. Um, but I, I've grown to really like it, and it, it didn't take long. And the shape of this handle is very nice. It, it flares out a bit at the end. Uh, reminds me, you know, in the spirit of Strider, it kind of widens out towards the end, and then it's got these. Uh, got this milling in here that's a bit of an anzo pattern um and it's quite inexpensive so i would check this out made in china you know of course uh made in china um it's if you think it looks interesting or if you need a good bang around i mean a super solid bang around not too heavy but but very sturdy knife I, so far i can recommend that this one is cool um I chose this one because it's big and tactical. And this is also from Elite Tactical. This is called the Conqueror. And uh, it's a flipper with a big old um, double peaked clip point blade there. Um, it is, a, you know, I'm happy to see someone making big knives. Uh, this is a four and it's a 4.8 inch blade. So almost five inches there. You've got a sculpted GRN handle that has is very comfortable. You got that forward position, and then you have a backward posi uh, back position with your uh, pinky in that bird's beak, and you get some length there. Uh, very sturdy, uh, just very strong lock up here. I'm not sure. I have not put either of these uh i put this to a bunch of edc use and i plan to take this out and bang around in the backyard and you know just for light stuff that i use big folders for divining stuff and small saplings and limbs and stuff and i want to see how this blade works uh when it's receiving impact i just don't know i don't know if it's going to jump out of there or if it's going to make it set you know lock in there even tighter but a cool blade, also very inexpensive. I won't give prices here. You can go check them out uh, on Amazon or mastercutlery.com. Uh, I'm going to do some more uh, noodling around with these and actual testing of these so I can uh, actually recommend them in good conscience uh, if if I end up doing so, which I, I so far I'm pretty impressed with both of these knives. But like when you get a cold steel, a large cold steel, other people and cold steel themselves have banged on them so much. There's no need for me to like take mine out and hammer it, you know, and, and do pull-ups on it. So, but I haven't seen that from this. So also a very addictive, um, fidgety, um, what do you call it? Action and actually re reaching, pulling this up to close it feels very good and very natural. Uh, however, there have been a couple of times where I've been thinking and not looking at and not thinking and it's felt like a, an axis lock. So I've pulled it, tried to pull it back. And I'm like, wow, I really jammed that lock in there. That's a, that's a ding. And then I'm like, oh wait, no, that goes up and it really very easily. All right. So these are from elite tactical. I'm going to, I'm going to go deeper into them and uh, 
you know, uh, get some testing, testing done on them. And, you know, my kind of light suburban dad testing, but still uh, make sure that they can bang around with the, with some of the better knives and, and then I will recommend them in good conscience. Okay. So that's master cutlery. Thank you, master cutlery for sending me those elite tacticals. And then also those, uh, those little novelty knives. They're adorable. I love them. And yes, a knife can be adorable. Cheers. Here's my Mount Vernon, George Washington coffee mug to contract new debts is not the way to pay old ones. And he was right. Pay heed. Oh, rulers of today. Okay. We're going to talk about knives under three and a half inches, which I'm always talking about, you know, it's gotta be at least three and a half or over. Uh, and if it's not, I don't have to get it. Even if it's a really, really, really amazing, beautiful design, like the secant. Luckily the secant was not in my, uh, wheelhouse so i didn't i didn't feel obligated to buy it but now that i have it maybe my wheelhouse is moving it's not it's not moving it's expanding we're putting an addition on the wheelhouse for under three and a half inch knives and i realize this probably started in earnest with the bug out this to me is still my ultimate uh sub three and a half inch knife because sub three and a half to inch to me means not in the front right pocket which means Oftentimes it might be in the waistband or in the back pocket. So it's going to have to be somewhat slim and it's going to, uh, for it, especially if it's in the waistband and, uh, it's going to have to be, what, what was I saying? Slim and, and light. And there are a few knives slimmer and lighter than the Benchmade bug out. I have the, uh, the left-handed, um, snaggle tooth. Uh, mf on there and uh, because this in the winter is uh, frequently my jacket inside pocket knife and i like knowing that i can reach into my pocket and just pull it out and have it open so oh this one is also wearing the allen putnam scales it's great now the uh, bench uh, the uh, bug out has a million different ways you can get this knife but when it first came out it was just with the cheesy blue frn scales and this was one of the first options for my carta that i found and um, I like the Alan Putnam look. He he always uses the um, the sort of Anzo pattern, and I like that a lot. And these have patinaed so nicely. Uh, so this is the Benchmade bug out, and I am going to say that that is probably the chief chief among all of these here. At least have have gotten the most pocket time. Next up, a new favorite uh, is Kubi. I love Kubi knives. Uh, I only have two of them, and I don't have plans to get many of them, but the two I have have been awesome. The other Kubi I have, the Flash, is a full-size, nearly four-inch bladed knife, and that was my Blade Show 2022 knife exclusively. That's the only thing I brought because I was afraid TSA would take anything that I brought with me. So I brought that one, and they didn't take it. This is the Vagrant. <clears throat> This was a gift to me from Dave and uh, of this old sword blade reviews. And I love this knife. Look at that blade shape. This one, uh, this model comes in two different blade shapes, this worn cliff and then a more rounded spine um, sheep's foot. And, but they, they share that shaped handle, which is great. All of those angular facets feel amazing in hand. I mean, it, it just fits perfectly in hand in reverse grip or regular uh, saber grip what have you, just a very comfortable knife. You just choose which blade shape you want. Um, I think that this is the wicked looking blade shape. It also has the point a little bit higher so that it's center line. Again, that's, I always like that because no matter how your blade is oriented, you have a good idea of where that tip is. Um, great for the slow roll, great for the spidey flick, great for the thumb flick. Just an outstanding knife. And then this one here, uh, is I'm going to measure some of these as we go. Yeah, this is uh, three point. This is three point one inches. It's a it's a just over, just over three inches. This you'll notice this list has nothing under three inches. <laughs> it, it's a weird. It's it's got to be three to three point four inches basically. Next up is one that I've carried a lot recently. This one got a lot of carry this summer. This is a good uh, shorts knife. Um, this is the, the Kaiser Pelican, designed by our French friend Jonathan Renaudin, K. Maxram. 
I love his designs. I have a number of uh, the Preta 2 is him, and uh, I have a number of his designs. This one is one of my favorites, though, because it has that signature thumb swale that we see with his designs, which I find very fetching. Also, on this blade, very comfortable. Fits the thumb so nicely. Uh, we see a nice, <coughs> excuse me, we see a nice clip point there, which creates a nice, that point creates a nice uh, starting point to a cut. Very thin, sharp N690 blade on um, black canvas micarta handle, inset liners, and just pops open with authority. I love this thing. Uh, it The slow roll on this is difficult. I have, not difficult. It's fussy for me. I have to get it with a certain part of my thumb, like right near the joint. Otherwise, I have difficulty not just popping it out. Um, so great little knife. This one got a lot of pool time this past summer. I was thinking of doing a, a, a list of the most carried knives this past summer, but I thought, A, that ship has sailed, and B, you know, I kind of talked about it all summer. So, okay, next up was one that... Man, it's been recommended to me a million times and is on seems to be on everyone's list for knives to get newbies. I uh, I posted the question, posited the question on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, what would you get for someone? You know, I had someone who just started working for me who was a little squeamish about knives and I wanted to break them into the beauty of knives and the and the wonder and the utility, I ended up getting him a Swiss Army knife, which is good for him because it's got all the different tools and stuff like that. But a lot of people recommended the QSP Penguin. And I finally, after that conversation, finally went out and got one. I didn't go out because you can't just go out where I live and buy one. So I went out to the internet and bought one. Uh, the QSP Penguin, I got the original version with that denim micarta. So nice. I always mention that denim to me looks like uh, the denim you would see on the overalls that a, like a train engineer would uh, would wear. And all you train engineers out there are like, no, that's not what we wear. But I like how you can see on this uh, denim micarta, the patina, when you look at the clip, you can see that light shadow around the clip where my hands aren't able to touch. And um, yeah, I like the patina. I like the patina. Um, but I like the blade even better. This is, uh, this sits on my desk pretty permanently with, uh, you know, I have a lot of other desk knives and those things rotate in and out, but this one, since I got it, it doesn't really have an official spot in my special case. Um, I got it. I was sort of, you know, sort of probationary. Let's see how this thing works. Is it, is it worth all the hype? And yes, I've determined it is. And yes, I've also determined, I don't even want to put it away. It's just great hanging out because it is so useful it's on washers and it has gotten so stinking smooth i am just so impressed look at that qsp qsp makes some awesome knives they do the finch knives they do um kc's knives uh kc Sperion of uh of tempest knives they do his things um and a lot of others and man they're awesome but they first came on uh, the scene with the not this one this was one of their First one was the Parrot, I believe, and it was 20 bucks. And people were like, this is insane for 20 bucks. So good. And then and then sometime after that, this came out, and then they just kind of have launched into the stratosphere. This is one of the few. This is a size of knife where, where I, I like this, uh, this sort of fob, this or smaller. All right, that's the QSP Penguin. Next up is new to the collection, but... Uh, already very valued and loved this was a gift from the man himself mr dirk pinkerton uh and this is his contact by asymmetrical asymmetrical is the midline from beyond edc beyond edc has the beyond edc line the asymmetrical line in the middle and then their top tier line is uh, terra terra nova and that's that's the line that uh the river wolf by john demko came out from wonderful design wonderful i usually don't say wonderful terrific i'll use a hollywood producer line it's a terrific design it's really terrific I, dirk i'd love to talk to you about your design 
after the shoot. Uh, it's, it's really a nice Warren Cliff. It's sort of typical of uh, Dirk Pinkerton. And by typical, I mean uh, awesome, but also Warren Cliffy. He he tends towards the Warren Cliff, um, and and then when he veers from it, he does it in a very nice uh, way. But the Warren Cliff is uh, probably the knife I know him most for, but not just in its utility sense. It's put in a context where it could be used as a as a self defense knife. He Dirk Pinkerton's work always has an aspect of self defense, and sometimes that's exclusive. We're going to see a knife downstream from here that he intended to be exclusively for self-defense, but I think is an awesome utility knife too. But this one is obviously an awesome utility knife. Just look at that Warncliffe blade. That tip presents itself for pull cutting and tip cutting so nicely. And then you have this neutral shaped handle that has this peak here on the top. And that peak nestles right in the palm of your hand. You can use this knife all day long in this sort of pull cut um, posture, but then if you if you take it in a hammer grip or in a saber grip or something like this, that curve accommodates the curve of your hand. So re just a really nice design. It's it's not like the first time we've seen that, but the execution of it and the proportions are just ideal. And then you have all this micro milling on the on the broad chamfering that's uh, sort of perpendicular to to the uh, spine and the dorsal uh, section here. And this adds a lot of grip. Yes, it looks fancy and it looks nice, but the grip it adds is really valuable. You've got a an anodized blue sculpted uh, titanium pocket clip and an S35 VN blade that cuts like the day is long and uh, incredible action, just incredible action. I need to get more of these beyond edc knives in my life uh dirk has uh, another beyond edc knife coming out and it's based on the navaja and you know how much i love the spanish navaja and it's his sort of futuristic or contemporary take on the knife uh but this this one is coming in at three and a quarter yeah just uh was it 3.3 inches beautiful the ace i i highly recommend this one and and actually a uh, pretty decent price for that. Uh, next up is, uh, this is another, this is a Best Tech Made Beauty by Off Grid Knives. This is their Black Mamba V2 version two. Just a, uh, I love everything about this knife. And and it's, uh, this is 3.125 inches in length. And it's got a, a slightly bigger brother in the Enforcer. And then a very much bigger brother in the Enforcer XL. I should say cousin because the Enforcer and the Enforcer XL are are in D2 and uh, 14C or 154 and have G10 handles. This is premium. This is a premium build with this milled titanium, uh, black wash titanium handle. I love the little um, golf ball divots, that, that matrix of golf ball divots in the titanium is so pleasing to the hand and it's great for grip and great for indexing just to and and great for this worry stone effect it feels good in hand it's like a massage and you've got a great i keep using that word but i guess it's it works here because this is really awesome everything right around this lock is is screaming hot hot spot but everything is knocked down nicely right here the action is just stupendous as to be expected from off grid and from best tech you can swap the pocket clip on both sides this knife is and then you have that traditional file work jimping on top which is effective and also a good good indexer this knife is a uh, a dark horse not a dark horse a sleeping giant or something here you look in there you can see all the the titanium milled out of there or a best kept secret. I'm surprised people don't talk about this knife more because um, it is really great with that worn cliff slash uh, or bellied worn cliff or reverse Tonto blade. It's just an, it's an awesome knife and premium M390 blade steel. And I, I don't hear about it as much as I would expect. Um, so that needs to change. That's a great knife that, that we need to find people to carry that knife. Cause it, it's awesome. <laughs> That's that's a silly thing to say, but 
Um, the enforcer, if you don't, if you don't have Black Mamba version two money, the enforcer is also really awesome at a at a fraction of the price. So off grid knives, you know how much I love them. Okay, next up is from Vero Engineering, and it's the one Vero knife I have, and uh, I adore this thing. This is the Synapse. I got this at Blade Show 2021 uh, from the man and his wife themselves. Uh, such nice people, charming people. And what a talent Joseph is with his uh, engineering and um, his knives. And when I say his engineering, if you don't know, uh, he before he got into knives, he was building drones for the for the defense uh you know industry and or designing drones he made himself an electric motorcycle that was really cool uh you can see pictures of that online so uh, joseph vero is a is a very talented engineer and a, a you know, man of many talents also a very talented knife designer obviously here's another one made by best tech a bolster lock as I mentioned before, I love the bolster locks. This one obviously designed by an enthusiast, as actually many of these are. Uh, look at that little divot in there just for the spidey flick. Oops. Uh, so that little divot on that side allows you to spidey flick the knife open. One of the things I love best about Vero knives are is the flipper. I love that flipper tab. Very reminiscent of the mods people were doing early on with the Boker uh, Burnley Quaken. Uh, before they came out with a flipper version of it, people were cutting away the front of the bolster or the front of the handle there to reveal the square portion of the tang and then just adding a little bit of uh, something there to grab onto and then you could flip your Boker Burnley Quaken. Well, uh, things have come a long way since that mod and one of them is just the codification of of that kind of flipper and i love it it sits in your pocket it doesn't it doesn't peck on anything and uh it's it works great it i guess i guess it's because of where that jimped uh corner or that tab is in relation to the pivot but just a great knife uh and beautifully done uh also the tactile knives rock wall falls in this category this is just over three inches so it does make it into this category beautifully milled titanium liner lock yes these past couple of years the titanium liner lock has been making a big play and for the same reason that we love the bolster lock we love the the titanium liner lock there's no interference with the action uh in touching that lock bar uh this thing made completely in texas uh, everything in there is made by tactile knives except the stop pin. And there was one other thing. I can't remember what it was. Now, I'm not sure if that has changed in the interim. Um, I haven't spoken with the guys at Tactile Knife uh, for over a year, but they're going to be coming back on shortly. They have a couple of announcements to make, and I'm very excited to hear about that. This knife was designed to fit inside the uh, package of an old uh, Wrigley's five-stick pack of gum. Next up is the other Dirk Pinkerton I was talking about. This is the inversion. And I wanted to show this because that's a that's a three and a quarter inch blade uh, that will, or three, what is that? No, not three and a quarter, 3.125 inch blade, which is a quarter. I'm sorry, this is a 3.1 inch blade. Oh, Bob, go back to math class, brother. Uh, but, but it is, uh, you know, so it's in a small package, but you can do a lot with this. And yes, this is what it's initially intended for as a Pakal style self-defense knife. But in this, if, if you hold it just like a regular knife, it's a pretty damn comfortable, even with that weird gap here. Uh, and you still have the tip nearly at center line. So it, you can get a lot of good utility done with that, with that reverse Tonto blade. Um, this I know is straining straining the category but i had to i had to just add it in there because yeah it really actually does make a very good utility edc folder <clears throat> if you can get over sort well it's called the inversion if you can get over the inverted look of it you could see that blade turned around in this handle and then you'd hold it like this so if you can get over the weirdness of it um or the disorientation of it it's quite a practical knife um, and that is the Dirk Pinkerton designed Kaiser made um, inversion. Next up from Finch Knives. No, it's not the Buffalo Tooth. 
That is under three inches, believe it or not. But this Cimarron uh, is just under, this is 3.35 inches. And what a great little knife this is. This one is a finch that does not get much attention, I feel. But I like it a lot. It's very, very light. And it's handsome in the color combinations. It comes in four different color combinations. Uh, orange and green, this uh, yellow and gray, uh, a Kelly green on the inside, blue on the outside, and then a black and red. And they're great to look at. They're great in pocket. This is a great back pocket knife and pretty big for a back pocket knife. But the whole blade gets swallowed in the handle, like the Quaken we were just talking about. Um, you've got the the badge, the glow-in-the-dark luminescent finch badge, and a really nice 14C28N blade. Very good shape. It's kind of a continuous belly, but this first portion of it kind of acts as a straight. And great sharpening choil and something I love about the finch knives. Again, a low-profile flipper tab goes a long way with me. And this is a perfectly designed one, and it's what they use on every one of their knives. And I love it. This little knife is a, a little big knife. Um, it feels little, but you get a pretty good amount of cutting edge in that, in that nice drop point blade. So that is the Cimarron from Finch Knives. Next up, the Nightshade from Vosteed. Yeah, I love this one. I love this one. It's my little pocket barong, my mini pocket barong. I love that leaf-shaped blade and the downward, odd downward canting of the blade. It looks odd when you when you see it like this, uh, but when you get it in hand, you understand. When you get it in hand, you understand. That tip is way down low. Great for uh, using in utility draw cuts uh, without having to without having to bend your wrist too much. Uh, also in that posture, it works great. You don't have to do, and you don't have to reposition at all. You've got all that belly in that leaf shaped blade. So imagine having to cut some rope or some strapping or something like that and holding the knife backwards and pulling against the stop pin. Look at that. I mean, it's going to trap the material in that, in that downward, um, uh, downward angle. A lot of people I've heard talk about this, like it's like a kukri and it kind of is like a kukri in that it presents that downward curve um overall shape to me is a barong but uh, uh does it matter is it is it worth getting uh geeked out over look at that in in a in a pistol grip i mean it has a pistol grip and in a saber grip it presents that point right online so uh if if you need to thrust it into something it's you don't have to change the angle of your wrist and and compromise the structure. It's just right in line there. Very cool knife. And I know this is intended as an EDC knife, but the lens I look at things through, you know, also means it would be a good self-defense knife. Another good self-defense knife, which is obviously just made for utility and EDC, but I bend towards a different purpose, is the Hadros from Civivi. Love this knife. This is designed by Dylan Mallory, such a nice guy. I met him at Blade Show 2022, and I've been begging him to come on the show, and uh, that's not for everyone, you know, but he's such a nice guy. I also got a chance to meet his dad. That's always neat to meet someone's parents. Um, anyway, uh, so this thing is a really nice Warncliffe. That's 14C28N. That's on bearings and, uh, you know, thumb stud bearing action uh, to beat the band. Really nice slender handle, kind of fits right in that in that pocket, um, as opposed to against the palm with the fingers wrapping around it. It kind of gets trapped in the nook of the fingers right there. And oh man, this is just such a sure knife, and feels so good in hand. Very thinly hollow ground. That tip is a little dainty. Um, I'd hate to drop this one. Haven't yet. Knock on wood. Um, nice weight relief on the steel liners. And you say, Bob, how did you turn that into a self-defense knife? Well, first of all, you know, we know that the, uh, that the Warncliffe shape is very good for that, but it also fits in the hand in Pical style grip very, very nicely and com comfortably in that same sort of wrap it up in the fingers grip. So th there's that. Now here's one that's uh, pretty darn just tactical, uh, from the get-go and this is the microtech 
Ultra Tech. This one is double edged with the top uh, dagger edge being serrated. You got that black coating and the sort of bronzed anno. Such a such a great and classic knife. Now this one is really stiff. It always has been, uh, but I've been working on my hands. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, hopefully this thing uh, feels lighter and lighter to me all the time. But this is a 3.4 inch blade and um, right under that three and a half. But I wanted to show it because it also comes in the UTX 70, which is 70% the size of this, and the UTX 85, which is 85% the size of this, 85% the size of this. So if if coming under 3.5 inches to 3.4 is still too big for you, but you like this knife, you can take it down uh, 80, you know, you can take it down 15% or 30% and get smaller versions of this knife. Uh, so, uh, and that being said, this, this blade might not be the best for EDC though. I might argue it's, it's superior for EDC because you have that saw blade on the back to do, to do extra work, but let's face it. We don't think of daggers as utility knives, but those, this and the smaller versions of this can be had in the much more practical Tonto and drop point versions. All right. Last two are, uh, these are all, many of these are classics. Uh, but here's an instant or new classic. This is the shark's foot version of the AD 20.5 by Demco knives. This was from that first run. You got the gray FRN. You've got the awesome shark lock action. Um, I carried the, this among other things, uh, on my birthday two years ago and did a whole bunch of, uh, bamboo whitlin with it. And, um, because we were using them as stakes and stuff. Uh, I added this little fob. I like the fob. It adds some color to the gray. And um, yeah, not much to be said about this knife. This is another one that has, this is the OS 10 version, by the way. This is another one of those knives that at first was only available in this, in the clip point, and then it's exploded, uh, much like the uh, bug out in different versions and 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 uh, aftermarket options. and and. Uh, Man, it's so good to see the Demcos uh, killing it post Cold Steel. Um, I mean, they were killing it while they were doing Cold Steel, but not in this production way. So it's really nice to see that that uh, that take off. Okay, the last knife on this list is the OG for uh, the other OG. I guess I guess uh, this this comes even before the bug out, but this was the first three point one two five and three and a quarter inch blade. I was willing to carry in the front left, front right pocket on a regular basis. And that's the Yojimbo. And that's because it is just so bad. Look at that. This this one here is the 20 CV version. This was a DLT exclusive a few years back with the carbon fiber. Just haven't gotten around to replacing the carbon fiber handles, which I'm going to do someday. Uh, this one is wearing an MXG gear clip. Uh, I always thought the, the Yojimbo rode a little high. Um, and that deep carry clip actually makes the grip better on this knife in particular. Sometimes deep carry can menace your grip a little bit. This one, not so much. Uh, I have the five by five uh, tactical solutions, I think it's called, a uh, wave opener thing, pickpocket, I think they call it, attached. And uh, this thing is just so wicked. This, this is one of those, uh, this is kind of the original um, utility slash tactical ni uh, knife designs for me, where I became aware of the fact that, yeah, this thing, this thing was designed uh, as a self-protection knife, but look at it. It looks like a, like a big utility knife. Um, so this is a, definitely a double roll knife. Uh, could, makes a great EDC, obviously makes a great self-defense knife if you know how to use it. Um, and it's a fidget, it's a fidgeter's dream with that uh, compression lock there. All right, so that is my that is my take. There are a few others that I have, but these are the best ones. And um, I'm I'm thinking that I need to I need to start expanding my 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 idea of what is acceptable. Now I will always I will always have it in my heart uh, the four inch blade uh, as as the um, as as the best way to go because that's when I first started carrying tactical folders. That's how big they were. They were all four inches, and that. Uh, 
that's just stuck. Like whatever the fashion was in the nineties, it just stuck. I am what I am. And that's all that I am. All right. Thanks for joining me. Uh, make sure that you join us tomorrow night for Thursday night knives, 10 PM Eastern standard time right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then on Sunday for an interview with a extremely interesting uh, knife individual uh, person from the knife world. It's always fun. It's always a blast. Thanks for watching. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.